hunters and gatherers provide the deep background for the warrior and altruist archetypes, which in turn define why men and women often seem so different. Male culture is derived from the warrior tradition, that is the hunter, and female culture from the altruist tradition, the gatherer. Within these ancient gender roles, men organize to kill prey, which evolve into killing, threatening, or competing with other hunters, clans, or tribes. Women, on the other hand, organize to care for children and each other as they wandered in search of food. Both archetypes provide ways to get your needs met. The warrior helps you to be fierce, fight, and win. The altruist helps you develop reciprocity within community. Everyone contributes, everyone receives, and thus everyone has enough. In the modern world, however, the warrior archetype is as essential to women as it is to men, since we all need to make our way in a competitive economy. Moreover, the warrior archetype protects the boundaries, so anyone without access to their warrior is at risk of abuse, neglect, or being undervalued. The warrior also is important because it helps all of us to stay connected to our primal desires. It helps us know what we want and then go forward to get it. The hunter history shows why the warrior is so focused on competence and achievement. Incompetence in the hunt or in crafting weapons literally could get you killed in those times. As with many of the archetypes, the warrior can bring great gift but it can also degrade if we get caught up in its form and forget what we are striving to achieve or gain. If we have the courage to ask primal questions of ourselves about what we desire at a gut level, the warrior archetype can help us find the focus, skill, and drive to fulfill that desire. Basic to the warrior energy is a sense of pride and dignity. What is at stake is one's honor. To the warrior, it is shameful to allow yourself to be disrespected. It also is dishonorable to allow someone else, especially someone weaker or defenseless, to be mistreated. In the Camelot stories, the knights were expected to rescue anyone in distress. Unless they were saving someone, they would not fight anyone they did not respect, for to do so was considered disgraceful. In addition, they were sworn to fight fair. This included not harming an unarmed person, taking advantage of someone in no position to defend himself so that you were not a true knight. The warrior then is also about internal discipline. This means that your inner warrior helps you say no to temptation, cheating, laziness, or indulgence in sensual pleasures. It holds the boundaries against the more negative aspects of our sensory desires. In most warrior archetype plots, the hero goes through a series of life-threatening adventures. The more difficult the situation, the more fascinating the story. But the hero never gives up. Instead, he or she demonstrates strength and courage in finding a way to triumph over seemingly impossible odds. If we think about the journey of the orphan seeking rescue, we can appreciate the great advance that happens when people stop identifying with the victim to be rescued and begin identifying with the warrior, that is the rescuer. Developmentally, the warrior helps people take control of their lives and empowers them to help themselves as well as others. When you have access to your inner warrior, you will do whatever you need to prevail. The warrior also helps us overcome the natural instinct to survive at any cost. To be fully human is to know that sometimes it is necessary to endure suffering or die for a cause. Joseph Campbell noted sacred warrior's tradition in a number of cultures where the strongest fighters sometimes were tortured to death. Their ability to endure pain without flinching demonstrated the highest warrior virtues, courage, fortitude, and endurance. The warrior teaches us to claim our power and assert our identity in the world. This power can be physical, psychological, intellectual, or spiritual. On the physical level, the archetype presides over the assertion that we have a right to be alive. 
Warrior consciousness includes self-defense, a willingness and an ability to fight when we are being attacked. On the psychological level, it has to do with the creation of healthy boundaries so that we know where we end and other people begin and an ability to assert ourselves. Intellectually, the warrior helps us learn discrimination to see which path, which ideas, which values are more useful and life enhancing than others. On the spiritual level, it means learning to differentiate among theologies to know which bring more life and which kills the life force within us. The warrior also helps us to speak out and to fight for what nourishes our minds, our hearts and our souls and to vanquish those things that deplete the human spirit by speaking the truth about them and refusing to accept them or to allow them into our lives. Orphans need to learn to feel their feelings so they can move through them and let them go. Warriors, however, strive to channel their feelings as a resource for their power, enabling them to perform the action best suited for achieving the goal, whether it be peace of mind, financial success, or desired familial bonds. The warrior provides hope that good can and will triumph over evil. But even more fundamentally, the story tells us when people have the courage to fight for themselves, they can affect their destinies. When the hero triumphs over the villain, it reinforces our faith that it is possible not only to identify the dragon, but to slay the beast. We can take charge of our lives, eliminate our problems, and make a better world. In doing so, we rescue the damsel in distress, who is the orphan in all of us. The warrior says to the orphan within, You do not always have to look for someone outside yourself to save you. I can take care of you.